So I'm thinking about um, money and abundance and delving more into the idea that everything that we experience is serving some aspect of source energy and our own consciousness. So in looking at money, I have been over the last, over all my life, I've been developing a relationship with money. And I thought the relationship that I was building with money was about learning to master it. But what I experienced was an elusiveness to money. And that's not really what I want to talk about because my relationship with money is really complex. But there's just one particular point that I discovered along this journey that I think is um, really interesting. And it has to do with what a lack of money does for us. So in the last year, I felt very, very much wedded to separating myself from money focusing more on what my heart desires. And when I went into my heart, my heart has not one time ever, and neither has my soul, in any meditation ever in my entire life, never has my heart or my soul said that it desires money. I have always affirmed with my ego that I desire money. So my heart, for example, will say, I desire a home. Like, it'll give me the feeling of a beautiful home. And it feels warm in the home, and it's beautiful, and it's expansive, and I feel creative. That's what my heart says. And then what my mind says, or my ego says is, okay, I need money for that. I need at least $3 million to get the home that I want, blah, 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 right? So, in my naivety, naivete, in my naivete, in my naiveness, I set off in search of the money so that I could get the house that I want for my heart. And that's where everything went wrong. We all have our own individual stories and journeys with life, with home, with money. This is my journey, and I'm sharing it in the hopes that maybe there's some information in here that will help you. What I discovered over this year is that, you know, and I've known this, I've heard the word so many times, Follow your dream and the money will follow. Like, just keep yourself focused on your dream. Keep yourself focused on what it is you really desire. And the money will take care of itself. And the thing is, there's a little bit of flaw in that. Because if you focus on just the desire, the universe will provide you with the desire and sometimes it comes with money and sometimes it doesn't. So for example, I was focused very much on home and a beautiful place and this kind of feeling of warmth and energy and still a level of order and like people. And I found myself staying with a friend's friend and in a beautiful home, that was just perfect. It was just perfect. And it didn't cost me a cent. So, or I found myself in, like, the lap of luxury 
getting, you know, like, you know, room service, cleaning, um, you know, but also like, you know, like just meals prepared and spending probably all of, I don't know, $900 or something like that for a month, you know? So it's kind of like you think, well, wow, you're living in the lap of luxury. Literally, you're getting weighted on hand and foot. Some of us would think, oh, I, I would have to spend, you know, that's for people who earn a minimum of $20,000 a month, you know, in order to, to be able to afford all of that, you really have to make a lot of money. But actually, what I was focused on when I found myself in that situation where I was focusing on was having this feeling of being very, very well taken care of, being around people that I love and that I have tenderness with and feeling like I was a part of something bigger than myself, like I was a part of a community. And I also wanted this feeling of really being taken care of. Like, and I didn't have to worry about anything. And it was so easily delivered and so consistent and really just perfect. And it only cost me 900 bucks. And all of this is to say, like, could I have had that for free? Maybe. But what difference does it make to me whether I, what difference does it make to me? Meaning, who am I? My heart? my soul, my higher mind, my God self. That's who I am. To that aspect of myself, it doesn't matter how it comes about. I just, I just know what I feel. And because my heart and my soul and my higher mind, because I am really just all about the love, when I detach from the judgments that my mind makes, from the the needs of the mind, when I detach from those and I focus my existence and my perspective on what's on the God within, then the methods and don't matter. But this is what it means to be truly authentic. A lot of times we think, oh, you need to be true to yourself, but you're being true to your egoic self. You're being true to what your mind wants. And what your mind, your mind is limited by what it thinks and what it believes. And a lot of what it, what it thinks is what it's been shown in the past based on its experience and based on the experience it received from its parents and its environment. When you peel all that and its personality, the limits of its personality, its astrology, its numerology, all those are masks. All of those things are masks for the light, which is actually absolutely expansive of everything and love, creativity, expansion. So when we pull away, we start peeling away the layers that separate us from the light. So in other words, when we start going beyond the mind and we stop thinking so much and we stop taking in the world through our brain, then what we're left with is a, a, um, a body full of emotions. And now, on the, on the first le layer of getting into your body, you feel, actually I said emotions, but actually the first thing you might feel are sensations in the body. So you're with the sensations, and then you start to sink below the sensations. So you're feeling your sensations, I have a little tension in my neck. I have a feeling of little pulling, little dryness in my mouth. Okay, sensations. When you sit, those sensations are responding to an energetic 
vibration that's happening within the body. So you sit with your sensations and just keep giving yourself the message, let's get deeper below the sensations, what's there. Now you don't go looking and driving with your mind. This is a releasing of the mind. The mind is like a laser, very a very sharp, very focused on what it wants to find, like a like a dog sniffing out something. Right? Very focused. But when you're doing this type of an exercise to to allow this is more of an allowing. The mind is a little more masculine in that it's got a focus and it's going for it. Straight as an arrow. Looking. Not there? Okay, going over here. Not there? Okay, going over here. Very sharp. With this exercise, I'm thinking that it's more about like feeling the sensations as they move around the body. This morning I felt was doing this and it was tension here, rolling, rolling up here, rolling, rolling down here, moving, warm, a little stress here, oh, rolling, rolling. And instead of me chasing and saying, okay, well, what does that mean? Okay, okay, I see it there. There's tension there. What is that? What, uh, okay, what is it doing? So instead of being more like that masculine kind of direct focus thing, this is a process of being more allowing, being more feminine. So it's, okay, the pain is rolling. I'm more experiencing. I'm more receiving. My mind, I put my mind into a receptive mode. Okay, that's helpful. Instead of my mind going into a, I'm going to take, I'm going to find, instead it's going more into observation and allowance. It's more like a dance between the, with the, the, the sensations being the leader and the mind then becomes receptive and becomes the follower. So it's a beautiful dance. We're going over here now. Okay, I'm following. Now the, the pain though, or the, the discomfort of the sensation is taking this now over here. And so the mind just follows. It doesn't say, where are you going now? You know? And the reason I'm emphasizing this is because it's really important when you're trying to do your meditations and when you're trying to get into what your heart feels, you know, and when you're trying to do something like understand why you have the relationship with money that you have. There's the mind that says, I need to know why I don't have more money. I need to know why I get large sums of money and then they, they then I lose it. I need to know, right, very direct, very much wanting a linear path of understanding so that the mind can be satisfied. However, <laughs> most of our existence is not the mind. I, and the number that's coming forth is 97, 97% of us is not the mind. So, we follow the sensations, we allow them, and we roll with them, we flow with them, and then we start to feel our body as a whole. And yes, there might be sensations that are coming down here into the legs, so we feel the legs. And then we sink into what we're feeling and we just allow. Then we start to see that there are some emotions that are there. Now, those emotions feel can feel pretty uppity. Like some of them can be really negative emotions. Like you can feel sadness, you can feel despair. But what lies beneath the despair when you allow the despair to pass? Now you don't try to block the despair or you don't try to block or suppress the rage. What you do is you allow them, you be present with them, and then after you've done that, you're left with a sense of peace. Beneath all those roiling emotions is a sense of peace and expansion and connectedness. That is when you know you can hear and feel and get the clearest messages from your heart and soul. Now, when you're very 
seasoned and practiced with doing meditation, you can get into those your heart and your soul very, very quickly. One of the reasons why I'm always emphasizing meditation, emphasizing shadow work, is because the more you do these things, the more quickly and efficiently you can get into the real you. Shadow work and meditation, shadow work is working on the dark parts of yourself. Light work is focusing on the light connected part of yourself. When you do these things on a regular basis, you're actually creating balance within yourself and you're creating a safe place for your mind to function. So once you start allowing your once your mind starts grasping that that it's that the world is not the threat that actually that's not true. I'm saying that wrong. Actually what it is is that you the more you meditate and you do shadow work, you become more of you. And you learn how to use your mind and to master your mind. Your mind is always going to be your brain. It's like it's that thing. You know, and when I say mind, I'm talking about mind with a little m. Like the functions of your habits, you know, the things that are very much about being in the material world and having a logical through line. That aspect of the self is always going to be um, doing what it does. It's very predictable. You know what it's all about because you've been living with it and you're the one who conditioned it in the first place. So becoming the other means that you're like becoming the higher, more expansive self. And instead of identifying with the limits of the lower mind, you're choosing consciously to identify with the higher aspects of the self or the higher mind. So your mind is, that little mind is the part of the brain that deals with the material world. The higher mind is the part of the whole of you, which also uses the brain, but it's, the, it's beyond the limitations of what's happening in that lower part of your mind. It's more expansive. It's connected to everything. And it is beyond the limits of the physical material body, beyond the limits of time, beyond even the conceptions of space. Whew. Jesus. But I can go on. All of this is to say that money, I actually just totally went off on a tangent money is not about we think because we get caught up in money we think that money matters that's a part of the lower minds mentality we don't understand that money is a result until we get into the higher mind we're using or accessing our high, our higher mind when we understand that money is a result and will come instantly when we need it. And, but money is not the focus. Money is the result. The focus is how you want to feel. You might, want, you might feel powerful and luxurious and um, glamorous. That might feel amazing to you and you express yourself through your personality with big beautiful rich things high spaces you know hardwood floors beautiful luxurious couches and gold and you might that might be a natural authentic expression of your self now all of those things are just a mask that's that you wear, and masks can be good and helpful and beneficial, or masks can be detrimental. Like when you wear the mask of separation, that's not really serving you. That makes you scared and limited and withdrawn, and that doesn't feel so good because that feels like um, that feels like like false. It feels contrary to source energy. 
So, my God, I've just really made this complicated. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop right here. I hope this was helpful. There's a lot more of this to come. So, I know I'll get a chance to express this either through my blog or, you know, through writing or through another video or even just, I don't know, it'll come. But it's so good. It's so, it's so good. Shifting our understanding of ourselves and really allowing for a new way to understand abundance. That's what this dialogue is really about or this monologue. <laughs> That's what this monologue is really about. It's about um, giving us a new way of seeing money. And, oh my God, it's so big. It's, it's got to come out in the way it is. I trust in the way this is coming out. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off and um, wishing you a very blessed day and um, wishing you clarity on your heart getting really clear about your heart and removing those blockages around your heart. I think that's going to become my new theme and new motto, right? Letting your heart and your soul sing. All right, signing off. Bye, friends.